and we'll make a start inshallah bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in all praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon all those who follow his guidance, who follow his way until the last day. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, dear respected guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today inshallah ta'ala we are going to discuss the topic of patience and perseverance in light of the verses and the hadiths that Imam al-Nawawi gathered and collected in his book Riyadh al-Salihin The Gardens of the Righteous Gardens of the Righteous and this is the third chapter in this book in which he entitles Bab al Sabr Bab al Sabr the chapter or the door or the gateway pertaining to patience so let us now analyze what is the concept of patience in Islam what is patience all about in Islam now the word for patience is Sabr and the linguistic definition or the Arabic definition of sabr is to restrain, to withhold. That's what it means linguistically. Now we come to the technical definition or the definition of sabr in the context of Islam. And as I've said before, you will always find a link or a connection between the linguistic definition of a word and the technical or istilahi definition when it comes to Islam. There's a link. So we said that linguistically sabr means it means to restrain or withhold. But when we look at it from the Islamic perspective it is also about restraining oneself and withholding in relation to three matters as the ulama have summed up. So the scholars of Islam they said that sabr or patience is required with regards to three areas. Number one, that you have sabr when it comes to the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal and acts of worship. Number two, that you have sabr or patience with regards to the prohibitions of Allah Azza wa Jal and those things which are not allowed. And number three, that you have sabr and that you have patience when it comes to the painful decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. The painful degree, decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. So let's now go through each one of these. Number one, we said the first one was that we need to have patience towards what? Towards acts of obedience, towards acts of worship. Because there are some acts of worship that some human beings find heavy and they find they have a degree of difficulty. So we need to practice patience. Some acts of worship could be challenging on the physical body, such as what? Hajj. You know, you have to travel such long distances. You have to perform certain rituals and maybe clothing that's not so comfortable. Uh, maybe there is a lot of congestion, a lot of people. That re that's, there's a lot of patience required on, you know, with the physical hardship that comes with Hajj and comes with Umrah. Likewise, you have to have patience. For example, if you're standing behind an Imam, one leading the prayer, and he stands for long periods of time, such as maybe in Taraweeh, in Ramadan, or Qiyam, or Tahajjud, 
you have to have sabr. There are certain prayers that are long prayers, lengthy prayers, such as the lunar and solar eclipse prayers. Salatul Kusuf wal Khusuf. These are prayers whereby, although they are optional, however, when you do stand in these prayers, the Imam will stay for as long as the eclipse is taking place. And there are lengthy recitals and lengthy periods of ruku' and sujood. So, um, also when it comes to the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jalla and having sabr with regards to the obedience of Allah, it could be to do with, uh, it could be something that is challenged, that is challenging financially. So, for example, it's a, you know, you might have so much wealth in your bank account and you need to give your zakat. You need to pay that from your money, from your wealth, your hard earned wealth. You have to give from that and part with that wealth for the sake of Allah. Parting with your wealth for Hajj. I mean, these days, for example, if you want, uh, if you are after a, a basic package of Hajj, you probably need to spend no less than about six thousand dollars. We're talking about Australian dollars here. Um, so, therefore, an uh, act of worship and obedience mandate patience. You need to have sabr. You need to have patience with regards to the various acts of worship in order to fulfill their requirements, fulfill their conditions, ensure that they are accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal. And this, there is a universal principle, I think. You know, you, we, we use it a lot in, um, in sport. You know, when they say, no pain, no gain. You want gains, there needs to be some pain. So a lot of sports people can relate to this. But this is a universal principle that anything that you want in life, that you really yearn for, and that you really uh, you know, want to achieve, it will take some sacrifices and some effort and some patience. Now the second area that requires patience is patience as far as the prohibitions of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set limits. We are not allowed to transgress those limits. He has made certain actions and sayings prohibited, not allowed. Haram, we say. Haram. So we have to be patient by refraining ourselves and abstaining from doing those things that are prohibited. You see, as human beings, we have a nafs. There is a part of us which is called a nafsul ammaratu bisu. A nafsul ammaratu bisu. The nafs, the person, we have a we have a part to us that is commanding us to do evil things, to do bad things. A nafsul ammara. So we have to not submit and not surrender to our desires and to our whims. We have within us a software that is trying to make us do that which is displeasing to Allah Azza wa Jal through the whisperings of the shaitan and the agents of the shaitan, of Satan. So we have to have sabr from committing sins. What are some examples that we should be patient towards when it comes to prohibitions? We have things like lying. Islam against, is against lying. We have deception, fraud, riba, usury and interest, zina, uh, adultery and fornication, uh, theft, um, and other destructive sins. Many, many sins. So as Muslims, we must be patient from and withhold ourselves from committing and falling into sin and error and transgression. And all of this, of course, requires what? It requires sabr, patience, and it requires endurance. And that's why 
The chapter here as translated in English is patience and perseverance. Patience and perseverance. So we said there are three areas in which we are required to be patient. The first area we said was regarding the obedience, acts of obedience. The second area is prohibitions. The third area in which we are required to be patient is with regards to the painful decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. The painful decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, when it comes to the qada and qadr, you know, as Muslims, we have this belief in the six pillars of iman: al imanu billah wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yom al akhir wal qada wal qadr. Belief in Allah and the angels and the scriptures and the prophets and messengers and the day of judgment and divine decree, the good and bad, or the favorable and unfavorable. Therefore, when it comes to qada and qadr, there are two parts to qada and qadr. There are there is the favorable decrees of Allah, then there are the unfavorable decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. What do I mean by that? The favorable decrees of Allah are those decrees that call for us to be thankful, to show our shukr and our gratitude. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may decree for us, Allah Azza wa Jal may decree for us to have wealth, to have children, okay, to uh, have many different types of successes. So these decrees of Allah, are they favorable or unfavorable? They are favorable. And so we must have shukr. We must be thankful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا إِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ that when you do show thankfulness and you do show your gratitude, Allah gives you increase. So let us continue always to be from amongst a shakirin or a shakirun, those who are thankful to Allah whenever Allah endows them and blesses them with one of His bounties, as one of His blessings. And not to take any blessing for, uh, not to take any blessing for granted. So, we need to be, inshallah ta'ala, being thankful also, being thankful, subhanallah, being thankful is an act of worship. When you show your gratitude towards Allah, towards God, that is an act of worship in and of itself. So even being thankful requires patience, because we said all acts of worship require patience, sabr. So be from amongst those who always, and it shows their gratitude. Now, the, the, other, the other decrees of Allah are those that are unfav- unfavorable or they are painful. So you might be trialed in life with regards to your, your health or your body. You might have an illness, you might have a sickness. This is a trial from Allah Azza wa Jal. You know, I had a question raised to me just yesterday whereby... Um, a young girl who has been trialed with her health, she is deaf. And she is asking, why is she deaf? She is asking, why, why has Allah made me deaf? A very good question. And as Muslims, we understand that Allah is the all-wise. And there are different responses that we can يعني, give towards this. This isn't, of course, the time and place to discuss this issue. But Allah Azza wa Jal trials people differently. And He puts them through tests. And the harder the test, the more the reward. And perhaps what appears to be a calamity to you is actually a blessing. Maybe this calamity or this trial is what will make you a stronger person, a better person, a more steadfast person. Maybe without it you would be a corrupted person. So, we should never really question Allah Azza wa Jal. Never question the Creator or the Creator's decrees. We say, as the Prophet Sallallahu he used to say, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. Praise be to Allah for all state of affairs. So, with regards to the unfavorable or the painful decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal, you could be trialed with your wealth. 
You could be trialed with also your family members. You have difficult family members, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your children. Um, their sicknesses, their, their uh, things that they do that is, that is difficult. Um, and there are many other trials and tribulations that we encounter in this life. Once again, with regards to this, we need to have sabr, endurance, perseverance, patience. Now, how do you display your patience? Your patience is displayed, we said, by refraining. By refraining what? By refraining your tongue, your heart, and your limbs from actions which manifest impatience. So, we know now that patience is required to three matters. It's required with regards to the obedience of Allah, prohibitions of Allah, unfavorable or painful decrees of Allah. Right? That's where the patience is required. What are we being patient through? Through our words, through our actions, through our heart. So, when an unfavorable, when an unfavorable decree befalls a person, a person may opt to behave in one of four ways. So it could be a person may display resentment and anger. You can, as soon as something happens to you, you have the choice, right? You can go on and behave in a very uh, resent, resentful manner, an angry manner, or you can be patient, or you can show your acceptance, or you can show thankfulness and gratitude. We're going to go through this. The first one, you can show resentment. You can display resentment. So, you may show resentment or discontent or anger with your heart, with your tongue, or with your limbs. How does a person show resentment through their heart? How can it possibly be that a person has resentment in their heart with regards to a decree that they see as unfavorable and bitter and painful? The way this happens is that a person harbors or has ill feelings about Allah. Resentment about Allah Azza wa Jal. They feel that Allah has oppressed them. That's not allowed. You don't say that Allah has oppressed me because then you are saying that Allah is an oppressor. And that is not befitting for the Creator. Because He is perfect. Allah Azza wa Jal does not oppress a single, any of His creation, whether it be uh, human beings or animals. Allah is not oppressive. So you cannot accuse Allah Azza wa Jal or question Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's how you display your resentment with your heart. Some people they display their resentment or their discontent or their anger through their tongue. They start swearing. Or they may you know, utter phrases that are displeasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's how you show your resentment with your tongue. Another way that people show their resentment and their anger and their discontent is through their limbs, through their body parts. So for example, in some cultures and some uh, people what they do, for example, if somebody dies, they strike their cheeks. This is not allowed in Islam. Striking of the cheeks. Or for example, they pull their hair. Okay, that's not allowed in Islam. Or for example, they tear their clothes. Okay, all of this is not how we deal with a calamity and a misfortune. So, people who behave in this way, obviously their Iman or their faith or their knowledge is weak. And so they need to start to tend to their Iman and nurture it and water it and so that they don't behave in manners which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those people who behave in that manner are deprived of the reward and they gain sin. So instead of get gaining a reward as a result of their loss, 
they actually get sins. So they end up with two misfortunes. The misfortune with regards to their deen and the misfortune with regards to that which they were afflicted with. When they could have been patient and they could have gained reward instead of sin. Now another way in which people behave towards uh, an unfavorable decree of Allah Azza wa Jal is they display patience. They have sabr. So we said the first way that they show is that they show their discontent through their we said through their heart and through their you know words and through their actions but then there are some people who are patient so for example they hate or they dislike the misfortune and the fact that they've been afflicted with it however they are patient nobody is telling you not to like it nobody's saying that you have to put a smile on your face and be happy with a loss or with a misfortune no but what Islam is saying here is how we deal with the misfortune. What is our approach towards the misfortune, towards the loss, towards the calamity? So that we shouldn't have resentment towards Allah in our heart. Or say something that displeases Allah. Or do something that, war that warrants the anger, the wrath, the ghadab of Allah Azza wa Jal. So yes, you hate it, some people they hate it, but they are patient. The third category of people are those who show their acceptance. So some people, they are afflicted with a calamity or a hardship, distress, and they show total acceptance as if nothing happened to them. No sign of any agitation can be seen on them. That's some people. And another group of people, they show thankfulness. So even though they are going through this misfortune, they behave in such a way where they show gratitude and thankfulness towards Allah Azza wa Jal. Because they know that they will be compensated and rewarded by Allah for their gratitude and their thankfulness and their patience. In the hadith which is found in Ibn Majah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported that is reported that whenever the Prophet was afflicted with that which he disliked, he praised Allah. So he says, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. This is the sunnah. The sunnah is, the prophetic way is, when you are going through a misfortune, a hardship, a challenging moment in your life, that you say, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. Which means, Praise be to Allah for every state of affair. For everything that happens to me, Alhamdulillah. If it's from Allah, Allah knows what is best for me. And again, the ideal Muslim is the one who keeps in front of his eyes the ayah or the ayat or the verses which state, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ It may be that you hate something, you dislike something, but there is khair, there is good in it for you. You see, we might, we might like something, we might want something, but really it's not good for us. We might hate something, but it's actually good for us. Like medicine, we hate the taste of medicine, we hate to go through certain treatments or surgery or procedures, but they need to be done for there to be a betterment. Yes, we're going to go through some pain, we're going to go through some suffering. Yes, there's going to be some bitterness. But at the end of it, there's going to be, inshallah, a better outcome. That's how we look at things. Even as Muslims, when we are trialed and we are faced with these uh, hardships, one of the pious women of the past, she was afflicted with her finger. She had wounded her finger, injured her finger in one way or another. And it was a serious injury and, and, and the people knew about it. And she would just walk about saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, very content. And they say to her, look, the people are saying to her, you have been, you know, you're going through this loss and this injury and you're in pain, you should be in suffering. And yet you are just saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And she said, 
she made a statement saying halawatu ajriha the sweetness of its reward that the sweetness yani and set me mararat sabriha it made me forget about uh, the the bitter patience so she is now looking at the reward that she is gaining she is looking at the reward that she is gaining uh, by being patient and not looking at the bitter situation that she's in but she's looking at the sweetness of the reward so sometimes subhanallah we need to put ourselves into this state so that we can make the pain and 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 suffering easier on us in any case imam al-nawawi he has uh, gathered some hadiths from different books of hadith which deal with the topic of sabr and deal with the topic of patience and he has also in the beginning of the topic he has gathered some ayat some verses and one of the verses here that he begins with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sabiru wa sabiru O you who have believed, endure and be more patient. So Allah Azza wa Jal gives us instructions in the Quran to be patient, to endure and to be patient. And elsewhere, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says in the Quran, "وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ." And certainly we shall test you. With something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives, in other words loss of lives and fruits, but give glad tidings to As-Sabirun. Give glad tidings to those who practice patience. Give glad tidings to them. And there are other ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, استعينوا بالصدر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين. Seek help in patience and الصلاة. Truly, Allah is with the sabirun. So there are several, numerous verses in the Quran that talks about sabr. Over one hundred verses in the Quran that deal with the concept and the notion of. Sabr of patience. Now, let me share with you just some of some ahadith because we won't have time to uh, go through all of them because there are a number of them. And this is what I'll be doing every week, inshallah, when it comes to this series. Is that I'll just hand pick some hadiths which are important hadith to do with this chapter of patience. There is a hadith that he's collected here. It is the hadith of Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiyallahu anhu. He reported that certain people of the Ansar, that is the people of Medina, the uh, original inhabitants of the people of Medina, they asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he gave them. Then they again asked him, and he gave them until all what he possessed was exhausted. Everything that he owned, that's it. They didn't have anything else to give. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. When whatever wealth I have, I will not withhold from you. Whosoever would be chaste and modest, Allah will keep him chaste and modest. And whosoever would seek self-sufficiency, Allah will make him more. Allah will make him self-sufficient. And Allah will make. Uh, and and whosoever would be patient. And this is now the moral of this hadith. And why this hadith was selected in this chapter? And whosoever would be patient, Allah will give him patience, and no one is granted a gift better and more comprehensive than patience. That's the best gift for you to be patient, because we said then you, if you have patience, you're going to be patient with regards to many issues in your life, many challenges. Another hadith that I want to share with you that Imam Al-Nawawi collected is the hadith of uh, Abu Yahya Suhaib ibn Sinan radiallahu anhu 
May Allah be pleased with him. He's one of the Sahaba. He reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is a beautiful hadith. Listen to this hadith. عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنْ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنْ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ رواه مسلم He said, the Prophet ﷺ has said, How wonderful is the case of a believer? There is good for him in everything and this applies only to a believer. If prosperity, if goodness attends him, he expresses gratitude to Allah and that is good for him. And if adversity, if a hardship befalls him, he endures it patiently and that is better for him. So again, in this hadith we see that the true believer is one who is patient and who has sabr. Another hadith that Imam al-Nawawi mentions in his compilation, he mentions actually the hadith about uh, the boy, the king and the sorcerer, the long hadith. I'm not going to read the hadith, it's a long hadith. but. This hadith we've um, dedicated a whole lecture for and you can download it from the website uh, entitled The Boy, the King and the Sorcerer or The Boy, the King and the Magician. So this hadith also shows the patience that was uh, showed by the young boy. <coughs> Another hadith that I want to share with you that Imam al-Nawawi collected is the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. This hadith is originally found in Sahih al-Bukhari. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Allah the Exalted says, I have no reward other than Jannah, other than Paradise, for a believing slave of mine who remains patient for my sake, when I take away his beloved one from among the inhabitants of the world. That when somebody that is beloved to you dies, a close family member, a relative, if you behave in a patient manner and you don't go about doing the things which displays impatient, Allah will compensate you with Jannah for this patience. Whether it's a child, whether it's your wife, whether it's your parents, someone very dear to you. And this is really a great display or sign of faith to accept their death as the will of Allah Azza wa Jal and to bear their love, loss with patience, with sabr. Another hadith, hadith Aisha radiallahu anha wa ardaha, and the hadith is found in Sahih Bukhari. She reported, I asked the Messenger of Allah وسلم, about uh, pestilence and he said, uh, which is ta'un or uh, a plague, ta'un, plague. He said, it is a punishment which Allah sends upon whomever He wills. But Allah has made it, made it as a mercy to the believers. Ta'un. A, a plague, some illness that uh, befalls the believers, this is a form of mercy. Anyone who remains in a town which is plagued with ta'un, maintaining patience, expecting the reward from Allah and knowing that nothing will befall him other than what Allah has foreordained for him, he would receive a reward of a shaheed. You receive the reward of a martyr, of a shaheed. So again, to endure patiently. Another hadith Imam al Nawawi collected in the chapter of Sabr is the hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with him. That is found also in Sahih al Bukhari. Anas, he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, saying, Allah the Glorious and Exalted, he said, When I afflict my slave in his two dear things, 
bihabibatayhi in other words his eyes anybody who loses their eyesight and he endures patiently i shall compensate him for them with jannah so the next time a blind man a blind person asks you about the reward of being blind then the response will be this hadith that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever endures patiently whilst being blind their reward is jannah that's it you're going to jannah just be patient do your basic obligations be patient and you go to jannah because blindness is the greatest deprivation in the world and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant reward for a person immense reward for the person who is blind another hadith this is a a, a, a very interesting hadith as well it is the hadith that is found in bukhari and sahih muslim and ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu he asked ata ibn uh, rabah whether he would like that he should show him a woman who is from the people of jannah a woman at that time he knew that she is from amongst the women who are the, who the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned should go to jannah and when he replied that he would like to know who it is he said this black woman who came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she said i suffer from epilepsy and during fits my body is exposed so make supplication to allah for me so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said if you wish you endure it patiently and you will be rewarded with jannah if you wish or if you wish i shall make supplication to allah to cure you so either you can be patient with regards to these fits that you have and you'll get rewarded and you get a jannah or i can make dua i can supplicate and you will be cured and you will be cured so she said now i prefer to endure i prefer to endure then she added but my body is exposed but my body becomes exposed so pray to allah that it does not happen to me so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he made dua for her not to be exposed because yeah you know, she wanted her modesty subhanallah she wanted for her yani self to be covered all the time so in islam uh she could you can go for medical treatment of course you could and one should not yani ignore yani his prayer to allah because both have yani their importance but to be patient with your uh with what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you another hadith here abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu reported i can still recall as if i am seeing the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam resembling one of the prophets whose people scourged him and shed his blood while he wiped the blood from his face and he said oh allah forgive my people because they certainly do not know so he was a prophet of allah you know getting bashed up by his people for calling to la ilaha illa allah you yeah, look at him he's making dua he's asking allah to forgive them that is indeed also a sign of sabr of patience and yet in another hadith that is found also in bukhari and muslim abu sa'id and abu huraira radiyallahu anhuma reported that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said never a believer is stricken with a discomfort an illness an anxiety a grief or mental worry or even the pricking of a thorn but allah will expiate his sins on account of his patience so anything that you go through in life whether it be discomfort sickness you have some anxiety you have grief you have some worry even if you got pricked with a needle or a thorn or the like Allah Azza wa Jalla will reward you and he will compensate you. And so Imam An-Nawawi has mentioned many hadiths to do with sabr. Another hadith, hadith Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu, he reported that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, 
He whom Allah intends good, He makes him to suffer from some affliction. So, troubles of this world like grief and calamity and disease and poverty and loss, loss of life or loss of property and so on, have a benign aspect for a Muslim in the sense that on account of them, he turns towards Allah and he begs his mercy and his compassion from him because of which his sins are forgiven. So there is actually a blessing for him in the hereafter as a result of this. Another hadith, the hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu wa arda, that is also found in Bukhari and found in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Let not one of you wish for death because of a misfortune which befalls him. If a misfortune, a calamity befalls you, don't say, Oh Allah, I want you to kill me. Oh Allah, I want you to bring an end to my life. Not allowed to do this. If he cannot help doing so, he should say, Oh Allah, keep me alive as long as you know that life is better for me. And make me die when death is better for me. So you leave it up to Allah. You say, Oh Allah, if life is better for me, keep me alive. If death is better for me, then bring an end to my life. So you see, this is your tawakkul and this is your, your faith in Allah Azza wa Jal. That, you know, you, you are submitting yourself to Allah. Allah knows what's best for you. It could be that death is best for you, but you don't know that. It could be that life is better for you. So, we have to remember that none of us have any knowledge of the, of the ghaib, of the unseen, of the future. Whether it is good or bad. So you should never ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, um, you know, to kill you as such or to bring, bring about death for you. Another hadith, remember now we mentioned, hadith Abu Huraira found in Bukhari and Muslim is all authentic hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the strong man is not one who is good at wrestling. لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالسُّرْعَةِ إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ He said, The strong man is not the one who is good at wrestling, but, he, but the strong man is the one who controls himself in a fit of rage. Controlling your anger. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when a man came to him, he said to him, give me advice. He said, don't become angry. Give me advice, don't become angry. Give me advice, don't become angry. Three times. Because when you become angry, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there are many uh, ramifications. Because anger paralyzes your thinking. Paralyzes your thinking when you are extremely angry. And so you make the wrong decisions, wrong judgment, wrong assessment of things. Another hadith found in Bukhari to do with patience and sabr. Hadith Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked for an advice and he said, as I told you, don't become angry. That's the hadith I was just mentioning. And he repeated that several times or three times, do not get angry. So anger in Islam is declared as objectionable and um, that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another hadith found in Sahih, uh, sorry, in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, reported that the Messenger of Allah sallam said, a Muslim, male or female, continues to remain under trial in respect of his life, his property, and offspring until he faces Allah with no sin record. So let's say, for example, you're going through these hardships, these trials, with regards to your health, or in life in general, your property, your children, and you continue to be patient, then you end up meeting Allah with no sins because of the way you dealt with those hardships, they wiped away your sins. So this, these were some of the, the prophetic gems, prophetic hadiths, 
that I wanted to share with you inshallah ta'ala that deal with the topic of sabr and patience we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make me and to make you from amongst those who are as-sabirun, the patient ones and always turn to Allah and always ask Him to make you from amongst those who have patience and sabr especially at the first instance of a shock as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى that sabr, patience is required at the first instance of the shock that's for you to be patient not later on immediately be patient and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help you through your misfortune through your hardship to give you the strength that is needed to deal with that hardship and every single one of us will be trialed in one way or another it's just a matter of time it could be the loss of a loved one it could be your health it could be your wealth it could be anything it could be a mental uh, challenge physical challenge financial challenge we all will go through one challenge but the, the main issue is how do we confront these challenging moments and alhamdulillah Islam has given us the notion of sabr and remember there will always be light at the end of the tunnel that yes that after every hardship there will come ease but it's up to us to just hang in there and this the victory and the ease could be just around the corner but it just depends on how we display ourselves Allah ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad inshallah ta'ala now we will uh,